So you might want a delicious snack at any point in the year, uh, some uh, oats and more or, uh, pretzels. But do you really think about the packaging that these pretzels or that this cereal comes in? Very rarely do we take into account the actual container that our uh, devices or our packages or our food, uh, that they actually come inside of. But everything that we create in this world has the touch of a graphic designer, not just in the actual logature, but in the actual design of the encasing for the product. So what we want to think about is this. Whenever you take, uh, say, like a cereal box, right, if you kind of pop it open here, just kind of flatten it out real quick, you'll realize that it's not a three-dimensional object so much as a, a flattened kind of origami shape that we've got going on. If we take this even further, we can actually find the seam, tear along the seam, and flatten it out. This is how the actual packaging would have been printed way back at the printers, right? Now, it would be folded and glued, all you know, done on a machine, but this entire process still would have been designed originally by a graphic designer. And there's some telltale signs that are used in the printing industry that the graphic designer is aware of. So, first off, depending on the orientation of our uh, product, say it's something that's going to fold more awkwardly, uh, you might have some text that's upside down or rotated in a different direction so that when it's folded all together, it reads right side up. Two, any good product that's probably going to have some kind of barcode, if it's food, it's going to have a, uh, a nutrition label on it. But a lot of times, too, you'll see that it, maybe in the corner, up here in the little flap, or uh, down here in the bottom, you'll see a little color code that shows, uh, that allows your colors to be uh, properly aligned. Uh, this alignment of colors is utilized in the printing industry so that the printer doesn't have to actually make sure everything looks crystal clean. They didn't design it. They don't know what it was supposed to look like. Instead, all they have to do is look down at this register, and this uh, color registration right here is going to allow the printer to know that all the colors are aligned properly. Otherwise, you end up with something that's offset color, like a uh, 1960s Warhol painting, where it's purposefully offset colors. Now. What you're going to end up doing is taking your Photoshop designed product, whatever it may be, and start to think about the packaging that it's actually going to come in. Is your product going to be shown front and center? Is it going to be more text heavy? Are you going to make it an illustrator and import it into Photoshop? Or are you going to make it in Photoshop and import it into Illustrator? Or are you going to finalize it all in InDesign? Whichever piece of software you choose to use is completely up to you. But when you're done, you're going to end up with a flat two-dimensional file that would be able to be folded origami style uh, into a three-dimensional product that your uh, project theoretically could go inside of. So do a little bit of measurement. If you know you are creating a product that's really big, like a chair, that box should be massive. If I'm making something really tiny, like say a mouse, then my box doesn't need to be nearly as large. Literally take a ruler, measure these things, get an idea of scale and size so that your finished box, your finished uh, product box container um, would be as realistic as possible. All right, let's check it out on the computer. All right, so what I've done here is I've got myself a, uh, a Photoshop is cracked open. Uh, I'm choosing inches, and I'm going to go ahead and do 11 by 17 inches uh, for my piece of paper. Uh, for yours, you could also choose to do 8.5 by 11, but I do want you to choose one or the other. Uh, make sure that you have a resolution that's at least 300 or higher. Uh, anything less is going to look a little bit junky. I'm thinking back to my original sketch, my thumbnail that I've done. I'm going to try my best to hunt around for images online, Google Images and, and other websites, uh, to try and kind of uh, cut and paste, kind of like Frankenstein together. So I've got this beer tap I'm going to start with that's going to be the base of my design. I want to have a little rubber gasket that's going to be used to kind of seal um, the, uh, the plunger part. Uh, so I'm just looking around here. This gasket looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut it out using the Polygon Lasso tool. The Lasso tool is good, but it's a little bit rough. Um, so I want to, let's see, I'm going to shrink this down. I'm using the Warp tool as well. That's uh, Edit Transform Warp. Uh, that's going to allow me to manipulate my design. And right there, I just used the pen tool to select. And then I did a right click inside of my selection and converted it uh, to a selection so that I'd be able to delete it. Uh, the pen tool is a lot more uh, of a dynamic range than just simply the uh, lasso tool or the uh, square select tool. 
Um, just going to keep hunting around here online, trying to find something like a, a gooseneck kind of hook for the, uh, the spout of my paint can here. Uh, that looks pretty good. I just need a little tiny bit of this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all the rest. I'm just using the magic wand tool to uh, get rid of any kind of background that is uh, flat and generic. Most of this stuff we've already dealt with in small pieces along the way in uh, Graphic Design 1. But really at this point we're just kind of putting everything together to get kind of a rough uh, makeup, uh, mock-up, excuse me. So, all right, I've got the spout on there, uh, found a little cap and everything. Now I'm going to think about the actual plunger part. Uh, I need to think about how I'm going to make this. So I'm looking for like a mushroom cap. I want something I can push down on. This one works. It's a little too skinny for my taste. I, I don't know. It's, uh, I need something a little thicker. Also, I want to think about the perspective of the overall design, right? So if I'm seeing the top of the paint can lid, uh, I also need to be able to see the top of the uh, the plunger here because both are beneath my eye line. So uh, let's go ahead and make this a little shorter. And uh, I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit there using my eraser tool. And I can always use the good old clone tool as well. Um, so I can use my clone tool to kind of, uh, in essence, copy and paste a particular texture around the entire design. So, um, so if I want to get rid of this little hole that I've created, uh, I'm just going to put in some texture right there just by copying and pasting. I'm going to grab my clone tool, drop down my opacity so it's a little bit softer, and just kind of clean up this edge just so that it's overall looks pretty nice. Looks like there's a little bit of a bubble there in the middle. I'm going to use the pen tool real quick, uh, right click, make a selection, and delete it. So there we go. All right, so now I need to figure out about what the height is. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. That looks pretty tall for me. I don't need to be a massively tall piece. Uh, again, using that uh, selection tool, uh, the pen select, and the uh, the oval select. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of clean that up a little bit. Now it kind of looks like it's in there. I'm also going to add on a little bit of a shadow. Uh, to make these designs, these mock-ups feel very realistic, really it, it comes down to the, uh, the shadowing. Um, that can really change the game. So think about as you're going along, uh, we're kind of gluing these different pieces together, but what direction is the overall light? So again, I'm just thinking about the overall perspective here. Uh, you can see I'm just drawing some doodles to remind myself that I want to get everything at that same angle. Um, and you'll notice here with the uh, the cap, I actually had to invert it real quick, uh, just literally flip it horizontally so that the, uh, the highlight was on the correct side. You can see the uh, plastic of the tap and now the, pla the uh, highlight of the gasket are both facing the same direction. Little things like that, making sure the light is in the right direction, really can make something look realistic. So I'm just kind of uh, cutting and pasting here using that pen tool to turn it into a selection. Um, I'm going in and doing image adjustments and I'm changing the uh, curves menu as well as I'm adjusting the um, uh, multitude of other menus in there to kind of uh, deepen the uh, brightness and the contrast. So I'm just going to kind of soften that a little bit. It was a little bit of a low res picture so I just used the uh, filter Gaussian blur to uh, soften that. I'm using the warp tool here just to again adjust the size of the mouth of this cap. Um, I, uh, I want to open up the mouth as well, that little flap right there. I like it, but I really want to kind of open it more so that it's more noticeable that there's a lid on top of that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut that out. Uh, again, I'm just going to use the uh, um, lasso tool. I'm going to um, uh, cut and paste so it's on a new layer so I can rotate it. And I'm going to go ahead, cut, paste, and use a little bit of the clone tool as well to uh, recreate the inside of the mouth of this uh, spout. So again, all of this stuff you know, we've gone over before. These are all different uh, tips and tricks along the way. Uh, if you get stuck, always feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to help you guys out along the way. So at this point, it's starting to feel like one cohesive piece, um, but there's one big part that I've completely forgot, which is the uh, the can itself. So I'm going to put these in separate folders. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a little shadow um, just by selecting the entire image here and, uh, and filling it in with a solid color. And then I can uh, edit, uh, transform, distort that overall picture. I can change the layer mode to multiply. That gives me a nice kind of shadowy effect. Um, but I want to adjust the actual uh, paint can. I, I don't want to break copyright law, so I'm going to use the clone tool to clean up this top here. There's a little bit of marking on there, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to go ahead actually and make a new file, um, and I'm going to make a brand new uh, label that I can use uh, the warp tool to kind of paste around my uh, paint can, so that, that way I'm making it kind of all my own. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this gasket real quick. That looks pretty good. And I'll do File New, 
and I'll make a new document. And uh, I'm just gonna do like a really rough, super generic paint can. I'm just using the type tool real quick, a nice kind of bold aerial font there. And uh, I'll play with um, drawing out a text box and I'm just gonna uh, put in some blanket kind of generic text there. Um, just so it looks like something should be there. Uh, put a little bit of color, again it's pretty generic, but I can kind of use the overall layout that uh, the paint can currently has. Interior, exterior latex paint, just some generic text, change the color of the text and fit this little box. Uh, make a black text, or black box, and then use the Gaussian blur to uh, fade it out. Copy and paste, rotate it around on the other side, now I have a little bit of a gradient happening. Uh, so whenever I bend this and whenever I warp it, it'll actually feel more realistic. So again, just file, or excuse me, uh, edit, transform, and warp, and I'm just pinching that in place, and that looks like a really good finished piece. I'm pretty happy with how this all came out. Uh, I'm going to call it a day on our Photoshop job here real quick, and uh, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. A couple little touch-ups, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go make the packaging for your design.